And joining us now is Dr. Romolo Lalato. He's a weed specialist at K-State, and we're going to talk about a couple of things as uh, the Kansas wheat crop continues to get closer to harvest. Uh, Romolo, uh, thanks for, uh, for joining us. And uh, first, let's talk about an event that took place a few days ago, and that was uh, the, the wheat tour, kind of virtually because of this COVID-19 situation. The group didn't gather, but you and other specialists still took a tour of the state. Can you give us some highlights of what you found? I can, definitely. So, yes, this was a, a new experience for us this year doing this virtually, but we had very good attendance every day. We had about 160 people join live for our reports there. So, essentially, we went throughout the state, right? We visited the first day of the tour, which was May 19th, the north-central part of the state uh, and northwest. The second day of the tour, we went to west, west central and southwest Kansas. And the third day of the tour would have been south central Kansas and central Kansas. An overview of the crop at that point in time, right, May 19th through the May, uh, May 21st, is that in north central Kansas, the crop was really, uh, really affected by that freeze damage that we had in early April. And the combination of that freeze damage with drought stress, especially in that Phillipsburg area. As we move east from there, uh, it was uh, it, uh, the effects of the freeze damage was less apparent, especially because we had more moisture as well. From Phillipsburg West, we could see uh, damage from the freeze, especially in crops that were planted late after soybeans, perhaps in central Kansas or after corn in western Kansas. Uh, whenever we talk about the west central part of the state uh, and southwest, right, um, that was more of a mixed bag. And so we had crops that were looking very good with a huge potential probably of 60 or even 70 bushels per acre, sometimes neighboring a crop that we were measuring 20 bushel per acre potential. A lot of that also had to do with crop rotation, especially in West Central Kansas, that area around uh, Leody, uh, Russell Springs in, in that area, right? So uh, crops that were planted after a long-term fallow period that had more moisture were in better shape than those planted late after corn. Southwest Kansas is where we were uh, finding the biggest concern, which was drought stress. Many of those fields around Libero or Sapanta, really southwest of uh, Dodge City, excluding the Mead area, because Mead is actually in pretty good shape, but west from Mead there, uh, many of the, those crops are actually uh, showing a new potential of bamboo per acre or something along those lines, if they were dry land. So that's where uh, we had the biggest yield heat from the drought. And then finally here in the central and south central part of the state, we saw some freeze damage uh, down to about Ellsworth County or Barton County. South from there, we didn't see much freeze damage or, or any whatsoever. The crop actually had a very good yield potential. We're measuring 60, 70 bushel per acre potential very consistently. But with a caveat that stripe rust was actually very, very prevalent. So stripe rust in that region was actually in every single field that we stopped at, sometimes in very concerning levels. And many times the grower had already passed the, 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 the label for fungicide application. So definitely we should see some yield heat from that stripe rust. So that's a quick overview of what we saw throughout the state in the wheat quality tour. Dr. Romolo Lalato, K-State Wheat Specialist, is our guest this week. Let's take a break and we'll talk field day in just a moment. <laughs> 